the fairy dance. Cut common. Cut common is two minimum beats in every bar. So if you look at every bar of the piece, you should be able to cut it in half and you'll have a minimum's worth of notes on one side and a minimum's worth of notes on the other. And your minimum's worth might look like quavers, quavers, or it might look like crotchet, quaver, or it might look like crotchet, crotchet, or it might look like minimum. But the idea of cut common is that it's got that steadier feeling. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. One and, two and. This is in the key of G major, like etude. Hmm, nice. And it has a few little scale passages built into it. So let's go slowly. Run, pony, run, pony, run, pony, cook a burrow, run, pony, cook a burrow. Watermelon, watermelon, blueberry, strawberry, blackberry, watermelon, strawberry, watermelon, watermelon, stop. You can put out whatever words you want in there. If you want to say ta, tucker, ta, tucker, ta, tucker, whatever, it doesn't matter. I like doing a little bit of sight singing with these pieces because it's great to think about rhythm it's great to sight sing some rhythm if you just want to look at the rhythm and go <laughs> totally fine if you want to sing a bit of pitch go for your life if you want to write all the names of the notes in another good exercise so pieces of music that we haven't heard a thousand times before are great for exercising our problem solving skills and there are so many ways to solve a single problem just depends how your brain works how many strategies you have or which strategies you prefer. I'm going to play it slowly now. You might want to listen or you might want to play along with me. I am going to play both repeats. One and two and... It's got all the same finger patterns. So if you can play your book one Suzuki pieces nicely, this piece is totally doable for you. Just make sure you stop before you cross. I'm going to go a little faster this time. If you want to just bow along in the air or play along with me or write the fingers in. I don't know. You do what works for you. One and two and...
Well, you can bring some dynamics in there. So the first time you play an idea, echo it. Or maybe you'll add a couple of chord notes in there. I grabbed a G to stick under my B natural. So when I played my bar five and six, Maybe you would play the first note with a couple mordants, like... And then in the second line you could add the chords. You could even transpose up an octave. That would be interesting, right? That's a fun thing to do with a pencil too. Just grab your pencil and work out the B above that B and the B above that B and the G above that G. And you can write it out and occupy it or you can use it as a little brain exercise. Just follow the tune and make sure that the names of the notes are the same. Possibilities are kind of endless when you're doing this kind of stuff. So I'll play it one more time, a little faster. I might add some ornaments, I might not, who knows? But Take this as a starting point to have some fun with a short piece of music and play around, experiment and find out what you like and what you don't like because there's no perfect way to play this and as long as your notes are really well in tune, there isn't a wrong way to play it either. You can even play around with the bone. Right? So get a little bit creative with it and see how many textures and different ideas you can bring to it. One and two and.